are it's a long day. Thanks for sticking with us. Becky and I have got one more match for you today. And by that, I mean one more round. All right, we got the quarterfinal bracket ready to go. Let's pop it up on the screen. You can see who has advanced out of 272 players. The eight remaining are Dewey Vu with Amulet Titan playing against Zach Dubin, playing Four Color Blink. This can be the backup match, I believe. Max Kowanowski, who we just saw with Is It Murktide, playing against Mason Lang with Golgari Yagmuth. Philip Arusha with Is It Murktide against Jack Potter playing Amulet Titan. So two Titan decks in the top eight. And the match we're going to watch to start with is Robert Hayes with Four Color Elementals versus George Jabour with Azorius Control. Uh, and this is a Kiora Control deck, not a Yorion deck. So that's why we wanted to feature it. So the players are ready oh, for cool. us. Uh, sorry, not Kiora. Did I say Kiora? I meant Kahira. Yeah. Okay. I was like, whoa. Someone's, I was like, did I really like not look at this deck list? No, Kahira makes a lot more sense. Um, so it is a little bit of a different companion that we're used to seeing. I'm at, like, since playing a bit of Pioneer, I'm, like, when you said Kiora, I was like, oh my gosh, we're like trying to do some ramping things. Okay, I'm here for it. Let's see. Come on, put it on the screen right now. Let's go. But we is Kahira. So uh, going to be a start off here. Robert Hayes starting off with a bobble and a fetch. And but it is, is uh, hmm? yeah, it oh, is a it is a days undoing Narsa deck. There are four copies of Narsa in the main, so that could cause some issues for uh, a lot of Robert Hayes's uh, cantrip effects. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there also... are a couple days undoing. Sorry. This also is kind of like this. The Azorius Control is mostly the the like underdog deck. This and the Golgari Yagmoth deck because they're the only deck archetypes that aren't within the top four archetypes that we saw. Mm -hmm. And right. of the top four archetypes, the one that isn't showing up kind of in multiples is Burn. Right, and I don't think that's too oh, shocking. Hammer Hammer Time was in the top five. It was the fifth most played. Yeah, really? you, you did say though out of the top four that you thought Burn was maybe the the, the most lacking in in real strength, and that did play out. So just for people that weren't with us before, when you run through if you, the top four or five um, represented decks in the event today, yeah, so we got four color elementals as well as is it Merc Tide uh, being the most represented uh, decks at a pretty even percentage at the top, and then it was Burn, and then Amulet Titan, and then after that was the uh, Azorius style hammer time. Mm -hmm. And we did get two Titan decks into the top eight. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, chat asking about top eight deck lists. Uh, we'll, we'll get to them between games. Uh, after the top eight is, after the round of eight is completed, sometime overnight, all of the deck lists from the entire event will be made available on Melee. But we'll, uh, we'll get them for you. Uh, between games, we'll get a look at what's going on here. Robert Hayes' deck we've seen already a couple times. So traverse the Uvenwald, Ephemerate build, and and George uh, Jabur is playing uh, basically Wood Control. There are three copies of Chalice main deck. There are four Narsets, a couple of days undoing, and some incarnations. I think would be a way to summarize real quick what he's got. When you say it has incarnate, does it have Mold Drifter? Uh, no, no, it does not have Mold Drifter. It has uh, ah, it's fine. I, that, I mean, that would be cool. It has Solitude and Subtlety. Uh, okay. So, you know, like like many decks in the format, no creatures that weren't printed in the last about four years. Oh, back up anymore. Uh, I just want Mold Drifter. That's all. And looks like we are actually going to see that Chalice of the Void come down for one here. So mm -hmm. shutting off things like the ephemerates, things like those abundant growth, as well as two copies of both of this that Robert Hayes was playing. Yeah, so not game-breaking, but these games figure to last a while, and Robert will have plenty of time to draw cards that, that can't get through the Chalice. However, he does have answers to the Chalice. It is something he can remove. Uh, two Manic Prismatic Ending would do it. Looks mm. like um, that's right. going to try and come down here, but that uh, Prismatic Vista might be saying absolutely Oh my goodness. Not. George Shabur is my favorite player in this tournament. 
Why? Are you look at that land? And then it has matching with the Mark Poole That's signature for the counter spell. Yeah, it's perfect. He has the correct artwork <laughs> and signature. That's those are the lands in my decks. That's fantastic. <laughs> I was about to say they match yours. That's oh, great. Yeah. So old school. And then Jace. Uh, that's the most excited I've seen Joe Lissette in a long time. For those of you at home who couldn't see Joe throw up his arms in excitement. <laughs> <laughs> well, style recognizes style, I guess. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It is it is kind of nice. That's a that's the thing about magic. Like if you have like a basic land type that you really like using and you use all the time and you see somebody else use them. You're like, all right, I see you. Like, that's kind of nice. Uh, ooh, very nice. As a also the Seiju coming down to take care of that chalice and unlock those one CMC costs for Robert Hayes as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little bit frustrating to have to do it before playing that whatever spell it's going to be, as it does give George the opportunity to have two mana available. But I'm gonna do it. Here is. Traverse, yeah, that's a traverse. And George inquiring as to whether delirium has been achieved, and it does look like oh, it yeah. has. Oh yeah, Super we got artifact delirium. Artifact land and planeswalker. There's a planeswalker. There. All right, that will do it. Now we just gotta figure out what we're looking for, and it looks like we're yeah. looking for an omnath, which yeah. Makes sense. If we can keep that creature in play, we can start to do all the things the magic players love to do. Is draw some cards, gain some life, ramp some mana. There's a little bit of something for everybody on Omnath. Well, Jace does a whole lot too, and there's another counter spell. And that unholy is not gonna make it. And if there's not another one, <clears throat> and I don't think there's another red mana anyway, this Jace mm -hmm. is gonna stand on the board for for at least another turn. And that's that's bad news for Robert Hayes. It's already Bad news, no, and that's three counter spells that have come out of George's deck so far. Yeah, that's true. I mean, counter spell is. I mean, counter being being printed into modern has certainly had an impact, and there is Narset. That's going to make that Omnath quite a bit worse. Yeah. George will. And we're going to wish we would have looked for a oh. wizardry for something instead. Days undoing. Well. That mm. uh, there is mana available to cast that right now, uh, probably after. Oh, yeah, J that makes sense. Fate Seal with Jace. Look at the top card of the deck, that's going to be your only card. Days Undoing. Okay, so there's a two of in the deck. Mm. That's a combo. Narset plus Days Undoing means George Shabur will shuffle everything in and draw seven cards and his turn. Robert Hayes will shuffle everything in, draw one card. And then untap for the turn. So okay. very I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest. When we were talking about what decks we wanted to look at for this first match, I was like, eh, Azorius Control, I guess. It's not my favorite deck to watch, but we've been watching a bunch of other decks, and we should we should get the control players a little something to watch. Then we mentioned that there's Narsa and Days and doing in it. And now all of a sudden I am on board. <laughs> How quickly you change your mind. Here's the fairy. Okay, that's excellent. I mean, that's that actually is something at least for Robert Hayes. But yeah, facing down, we minus. We can't draw a card because oh, there's no set. Ouch. Okay, that was uh, that was too bad. I mean, I was thinking yeah, it'll at least stop all the counters that George Shabor just shuffled back into his deck. But yeah, I mean, it was gonna be tough anyway, and that made it a little tougher. And yeah, yeah I would I would about do the same thing. I probably yeah. would have done the same thing the moment that I got Narset Days Undoing, but uh yeah. All right. So game, game one of the quarterfinals goes to George Jabor. Let's go ahead and bring up the deck list, show you what they're working with. Uh you've seen Robert Hayes' deck a few times. We'll look at it again right here. Uh, yeah, mostly color. let's look at what will help Robert not get days undoing. Mm -hmm. So uh four color leaning elementals with Traverse, Ephemerate, and Emrakul. And right, okay, Becky wants to know what's going to help on the sideboard. Well, there are some tools, certainly. Yeah, some Vela Summers to stop the counter spells that George was drawing lots of, and mm -hmm. probably those Flusterstorms. 
this is kind of hard. There were a lot of like, there were like the mystic veils and ways to filter lands. And I imagine there's a lot of basics. It's only a two color deck. So like Magus probably isn't great, but this is hard because there's not a whole lot of other things in the sideboard that are really great for this matchup. Right. Right, but th but those are good tools. Veil vale and Flusterm are, are both good. Interesting to see Chalice in the sideboard of a facing against that has Chalice main deck. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's a Busechu, which may come in. Uh, this is now open deck list for the players. So uh, Robert Hayes will be able to, will know what he's actually facing. So let's go ahead and look at Georgia Boar's deck. This Azorius control with Kahira. And an interesting this sideboard an plan. Yeah, I yeah. was going to say, you were talking about it a little bit before we came on, but it's playing Stoneforge Mystic and a little bit of an equipment package in the sideboard, actually. So can kind of have this interesting, aggressive slant to it as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now this is the kind of thing that probably is more effective when your opponent doesn't know it's coming. But still, mm -hmm. uh, it, it can work. Uh, there are... What surprises me more so than just having it is that there's actually three equipment to go with it. That that feels like a lot. Uh, another thing that's relevant is uh, Stoneforge Mystic's creature type is... Well, actually, I don't know it off the top of my head, but I doubt it matches Kahira. Yeah, yeah. Okay, poor Artificer. So, is, so in order to bring in the Stoneforge Mystics, George DeBoer will have to reveal that to Robert Hayes in the pregame action by not revealing Kahira. Yeah. But you see the rest of the deck there. Yep. Four counter spells, a couple, three force of negations, a uh, fair amount of removal, a bunch of planeswalkers. I mean, this is uh, this is a more straightforward deck. Uh, fewer one ofs, fewer. I mean, obviously, it's not a Yorion deck, so there's less room to pack in all kinds of different stuff. And then the Chalice of the Voids on the bottom left uh, quadrant of the deck list. So, uh, no, there's, there's not really clean answers to something like Veil of Summer aside from leaving in Chalice of the Void, which mm -hmm. I don't think you'd want to do otherwise, but seeing the Veil of Summers may influence you to, in fact, leave them in. I don't know exactly how that will play out for for Mr. Jabour here. We'll see how he boards. Um, the players are looking like they're ready. They can go ahead. They don't need to wait for us anymore. Yeah. I'm I'm interested to kind of see how these players had sideboarded because mm -hmm. I yeah I'm also curious to see if this is a situation where George says this is a long enough back and forth that I am interested in bringing in those Stormforge Mystics or if this is one where just continuing to play a more controlling game is more advantageous and I'm kind of leaning the latter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure those Stoneforge, the Stoneforge for Bastille obviously would do a ton of work against a deck like Burn, even though, sure, the Stoneforge just probably get killed often. But it still buys you time and sets up a, a nice 5-drop that's a 4-4 Lion Fleaker. Here, I, it's the Planeswalker decks, and against Control Mirrors, probably the uh, the ability to Stoneforge and have haste is very significant. With Cauldra and... Sword of Fire and Ice is probably great in, in lots of scenarios. We'll see. We'll see. I do not see a companion on George DeBoer's side of the board. Uh, maybe we can get confirmation that it's not just off screen, but it's actually not there, which is what I expect, but just, just so we're clear. What if we like just brought one in? Can you choose not to reveal your companion? Like, could we do it just to like throw Robert and Hayes off. Okay, yeah, you sure. can choose. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. You could you could not bring in the Stone Forges and not reveal the you could just not for the mind in. games? Yeah, of course. You could even you could board mm. in the Kahir if you want to. There's no reason to to tell Robert mm. one or the other what's going on. Okay. So no companion reveal this game. That doesn't mean it's not in the deck. That doesn't mean the Stone Forges are in the deck, but those are likely conclusions that could be drawn here. And George is on a mulligan, I believe, as well. The Robert Hayes is going to be on the play. Well, Robert oh. Hayes was on the play last game, and it didn't didn't do him a whole lot of good. And well, that's not <laughs> fair to say. I mean, the the longer the games go, being on the play matters less and less. Yeah, and these are both decks that I think are anticipating playing for a decent amount of time. Right. Yeah, I don't think you put Emrakul in your deck. 
if you're playing yeah. on the game ending fairly soon. Although, given what some of these times, some I mean, when it costs seven mana, I mean, that's not that's not that much. <laughs> I, yeah, you're right. Except for that, you're not casting it for seven all that quickly. No, sure. All right, so. Here we go. George Shabor draws and plays a Misery Iron Forest off the top of the deck. I doubt he kept a no lander, but maybe it was one and that was the one he wanted. So he's going to throw it in and, and find a triome. Is there a spell pierce? I don't even think there was one. There could be a force. Deck, or subtlety, but, yeah. Although that's tough when you're, when you're on a mulligan, uh, mm -hmm. is pitch cast spells. Yeah, really start to hit, but it looks like it's going to be enough to draw it out. And uh, you mentioned both of them, but it is going to be the force to mm -hmm. answer with pitching subtlety. Okay, I see just in chat mentioning that there. Can we get, uh, if we can, uh, round nine of nine, let's get that changed up to this being the quarterfinals, as that is, in fact, what it is. This is our last round for the day. There we go. Good job checking that out. Um, Thanks, top Dave. Four and the finals will be played tomorrow morning, starting at nine central, which unfortunately is seven Pacific time. But <laughs> what are you gonna do? And the triome is indeed fetched out the Rafine's Tower, which no use for the black mana here, it's just a dual land that also has cycling. And I think I like making sure that the force uh, takes care of the Renin Six. One of the important things in matchups like this is being able to draw go or draw do some cantripping as robert hayes is doing and then say go and i, I would say that renin six is kind of the the monarch of draw go or draw activate get a land back make sure mm -hmm. that i'm constantly both thinning my deck with my fetches and also making sure that i am hitting my land drops and so making sure that it is something that your opponent can't do Quite important. I've been corrected that that is not, in fact, uh, Rafine's tower. Uh, it is one of the, it is the Bant Triome, or whatever. It's a Triome. Uh, <laughs> it allows it, it is. I was correcting everything. It is a Triome. Yeah, uh, and it allows Prismatic to be cast for another color. No, this one's not Rogren. This one is Spara's headquarters. <clears throat> yeah, you were you were right about it being uh, bant and not no use for the green is also completely right. Yeah, just uh, <clears throat> not even. Oh, we do have prismatic ending, yeah. so I guess the green the green has a use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the same way it was done in Legacy. One triome and one off color dual land, so you can prismatic ending for four if it uh, it ever comes up. Here is a prismatic ending taking out the Teferi, which. Already cast yourself in for a card, so George gets back a little of the card disadvantage he's been facing so far up to this point. All right, <clears throat> another Vista. Uh, so, despite having those mulligans, is finding those on Nymph. Oh, oh, there's not even a cavern in play. Production's trying to heck me over. Why would they do that? And Jace comes in and lands once again oh. for George Shabur. Uh, chat asking about tomorrow. After the Modern Finals, then we will pick up the Legacy event probably in round two, unless the semifinal Finals drag on longer than we expect, in which case we'll start Legacy coverage in round three, and that will run for the rest of the day tomorrow. So that's what's on tap for Nerd Rage Gaming this weekend. Thanks for being here watching, and thanks for inquiring about tomorrow. And there is a Fury, which is... I, one of only two copies in the deck, and there is a subtlety pitching the other Jace. Whoa. So, George Jabor with the choice there of maintaining the board presence or giving up card advantage, and decides to maintain the board presence. Yeah, it's really putting cards, a but, lot of emphasis on this Jace. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, being able to untap with Jace, that enables, even though there's only a few cards in hand, that makes them much easier to defend the next turn if there's more counters in hand and is there stoneforge there is could this okay. match be any more interesting right now but okay so we have the stoneforge our choices are sort of iron dice complete and 
batter skull. We're going for the batter skull. And, and the other thing fury. Be, oh, I'm sorry. No, did he get? No, that's the one that we uh, drew off the yeah, top because it got yeah. put back on there. For yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. Totally. Yeah. Uh, and the choices of the equipment. You're right. We don't know for certain that all of the equipment were brought in. Mm -hmm. Although it doesn't seem impossible. It feels like it would be bad. It would be really feel bad to only bring like one in, but then draw multiple stone forges. Sure. I mean, I agree that you'd want to bring in two, but you don't necessarily bring in all three. Although I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> and with Robert at 14 here, I mean, Batter Skull can be dropped with man to protect it mm -hmm. if that were to come up. Yeah. We'll see if that will be the decision. Has really held on to this polluted delta too, instead of going to fetch it till now, which is interesting. But just happy to get basics, I imagine. Robert sitting on Teferi, Emrakul, and a third card, so not too bad with what looks like six land to play. Not too big of a great area, though. So Emrakul's a ways off. All right. Narsa will take a peek. Top four cards. Keep one. The non-creature, non-land variety. What will it be? Force of negation. And finally, we're at a point where we're able to get back some card advantage. Uh, Jace was kind of doing it, but I don't know. It also feels a little weird when you're... Oh, that could have been the reason that we were holding on for the polluted delta for so long, too, actually, now that I think about it. Yeah, I mean, Jace... Defending the Jace and using the Jace basically equated to probably something like a wash... But Stoneforge mm -hmm. put, you know, George up a card, a solid 4-4, although that might actually just end up trading with the Fury. Narset, uh, <laughs> Narset can do some work here. There we go. Yeah. Somebody tried to tell us that Cavern was naming Nymph earlier, and there wasn't even a Cavern in play. This Cavern is actually naming Elemental, as it should, 99% of the time in Robert Hayes' deck. For those of you, if anyone was wondering, but it seems like Chat has pretty much also figured that out. So here is the Teferi again, which cannot allow the Fury to just come in and knock out the Jace. Oh, I'm sorry, the Narset on its own. As the Batter Skull can be dropped either in response to a bounce effect or just during combat. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. the bounce effect is, again, not so great when there's a Narset in play on the other side of the board. So Robert may be contemplating what, uh, what needs to be done here. I think. George is the one with priority right now, waiting to see what happens oh, if this Teferi is resolving or not. I see. Anyway. I see. Yeah, I think you're right. Well, if there's a counter spell, then that means the Stoneforge Domestic has to either has to block or yuck. Ooh. No draw, no draw, no draw. Oh gosh. Oh uh, uh, yeah, okay. George caught it. Well, yeah, but after it happened. But after it happened. Not, but not better everywhere. better now than in, like, uh, a few more turns. Yeah. All right. So this, uh, well, this will need to get a judge involved to clean this up. So speaking just to what we saw right before that, then, the, the counterspell on the Teferi. Now, I understand the... The urge to use a counter spell on Teferi because the counter spell goes dead once the Teferi lands. Mm -hmm. But so you would have just waited to batter skull and try to being, fight and by by yeah by choosing to counter the Teferi by choosing to counter the Teferi, then that's in a way giving up a lot of the power of what you, of your board because you're either giving up the Narset or the Stoneforge Mystic, neither of which is particularly appealing. I don't think. So that's mm -hmm. interesting. I don't feel like that's an easy choice at all for George Devor to make. Uh, he chose to go with the counterspell, got maximum punished. But that doesn't mean it was the wrong choice, but I do think it's a hard choice. 
Yeah, um, very, very interesting place to end up in. And, and it's got to be like a hard decision too. Robert has a ton of cards in hand. So you're wondering like if you do go for the better skull play, is it actually going to be able to attack? Is there going to be another fury that takes it out? Like what are the chances that the batter skull is able to defeat the fury over the counter spell and then just like weighing those two different directions? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely it's hard to gauge when. Uh, I mean, you know, Robert, with I mean, you have to assume. Well, you can maybe not assume, but you can kind of guess that at least one of, uh, of Robert's cards is probably something he's this blanked by the Narset that he's not going to want to play. So, that's well, maybe I, Robert wasn't even remembering the Narset was in play. Well, th- I mean, that's certainly true. The yeah. So what's going to happen? So what's when this the way this is going to be fixed? is i believe um robert's hand will be revealed we've been through this before robert's hand after he drew the veil of summer will be revealed unless they're able to determine what card was drawn yeah i don't know if that's going to be the case because i think i almost immediately saw robert shuffle and i don't think there's been any way that would have revealed the other cards deterministically in hand for robert to george's knowledge before that i mean the camera oh um, could have picked up what was in robert's hand before the draw check the and, tapes yeah so i don't i don't i feel like this came up a couple months ago and the judges determined that going to look at the video footage was not something they they i don't remember the exact reasoning but it was something they felt like was inappropriate or or, or something or other so it was not done so assuming that's consistently uh applied and we won't be doing that again here what will happen is robert's hand will be revealed to george George will take one of those cards out and it'll get shuffled back in the deck. And then Robert will continue on. Uh, unfortunately, there's no way to deal with the fact that like the Emrakul, for example, was in the hand. And if George doesn't want it to be, then it won't be anymore. Uh, which feels like that's punishing Robert. Uh, maybe unreasonably, but he did, he did draw a card in a situation where is also his responsibility to not do that. So we'll uh, and then there's some uh, amount of people in the chat who are like, oh, that like happened really fast. Like that shouldn't be put onto George. But in those situations, like a lot of the time, like people will verbally like we don't we aren't listening to the players. And I know that in a lot of situations, people are going to be like, oh, draw for Veil of Summer. Somebody, mm-hmm. like, without thinking about their own knowledge, that goes like, oh, yeah, and then looks down at the board and then after the card has been drawn and is like, oh. So the fix is actually a double GRV in this case for these players, and a random card was put back into Robert Hayes' deck. So no thoughts these occurred. Okay, so do we know if the random card was put back on top or was it shuffled in? It was probably put on top. Or it actually may not have happened yet, I'm not sure. Okay, they're still working. Oh. And you can actually see that the Veil of Summer is on the stack at the moment. So we it does look like we are either in the process of backing up. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's what's happening right here. So probably going on top. Yeah. Okay. So by the next draw step for Robert Hayes, his hand will be identical to what it should have been otherwise. And George has not gained any information that he didn't have otherwise. Mm-hmm. Uh, Teferi bounces a Stoneforge Mystic. And now the Narset goes down. So, yeah, I mean, that was playing that counterspell in a lot of ways makes sense for George. But Veil of Summer is a card that he is aware that Robert's playing. And boy, was that punishing, that Veil of Summer. Even though, I mean, Robert didn't misses out on two cards from both Teferi and Veil. It's, I mean, the board is cleared. And this is, like we have five mana, so George could even still be ooh okay able to just go ahead and tap all five mana and be able to play the batter skull, but has another stone forge mystic and is going to go ahead and get sort of fire and dice and then be able to once that stone forge mystic is no longer summoning sick, be able to get any number of these equipments onto the board. Okay, so sort of fire and dice not cast. Uh, with Teferi in play, I don't know what. I don't know if there's a reason to not have played it there. Maybe there is. <clears throat> Quantal's cast. So currently, Sword of Fire and Ice will protect 
from all of Robert's creatures. Now we're fetching and we do now have enough uh, snow permanence that this ice fang does have death touch to make this a little bit of an extra potent little bird snake. All right, how many cards in the graveyard here? It looks like Prismatic Ending, Veil, and Land. So there's at least three. So this Emerald costs at most 10 right now. So that's. I think there's a few other cards in the yeah. graveyard that we just can't see. I, I, I agree. I think there are also. The top eight archetypes are, I believe, two four color elementals, two amulet titan, two is it murktide, Azorius control, and Golgari Yogmoth. Yep, I think that is right. So a reasonable representation of what we saw in the field today. Aside from if we if we got like an accurate representation of like top eight to uh, the field, we would have seen burn, but burn being the third most played deck, not making it into top. Mm -hmm. Says whatever you will about the deck. Well, this Sword of Fire and Ice is going to have to do an incredible amount of work. Well, if there's a Record. card that I would expect to do a lot of work, it might be that one. I suppose, but there's there's currently, what, nine damage on the board in creatures for Robert? So even if yeah. Stoneforge gets loaded up and attacks uh yeah I, I don't know that that realistically can happen I, I do wish george had played the sword last turn so he had more mana available that seems uh like it might well i don't know i can't see his hand so i don't know if that's relevant or not yeah but it could also be a teller trying to lead robert to believe that there's a counter spell and none of the creatures that Robert played last turn are uh, like cards that I would want to counter spell. No, but because the Teferi is in play, it was my point. So oh, I see. As soon as we pass right. the turn, we know that. Whoa. Um. All right, brought in all of the yeah. equipments. Okay, Teferi goes down. Uh, now. George's mana is back online during Robert's turn. Facing down again. Yeah, nine damage. So not lethal on its own. And we have to I have to assume Robert can do or George can do something about what's gonna come across here. Ooh, Omnath to follow it up on the next turn. Yeah, with a Risen Reef. With a Risen Reef and a Cavern of Souls saying that you can't counter that Omnath. Mm -hmm. Okay, another Cavern into play. What's this one naming? Mm. Bird. Well, Uncle maybe not Bird, because there's two birds in play already. All right, and a fetch land, which means this uh, Omnath is actually going to be able to hit its third trigger this turn because of the Risen Reef land, which mm -hmm. means their fury is lethal on its own. Yeah, so we can get a lot of extra mana too. How close are we with the four mana? That's I think we can maybe cast Emrakul this I turn. think so too. But instead, uh, it looks like we're going to get Yorian to hand. I mean, that's one hard to disagree here. with. Yeah, even if we were to cast Yorian this turn, which we do have the mana to if we decide to fetch, because we have one floating. Um, looks like we're instead just going to cast Renan Six here. And we could have cast Yorian and done a lot of bouncing <laughs> and a lot of card draw. Is this is this a force of negation? George is dead. Unless I'm missing something, we or 
the the this attack plus the fetch land will kill George. Oh, because the four from Omnath right. damage. Okay, there could be a solitude which would disrupt that, and there is. So that will solitude will come in, take out the fury. Lots of stuff going on this turn. Robert returns to a starting life total. George drops to seven, and then will collapse down to three. And Robert will draw. No, I'm sorry. I don't think there's enough. Yeah, there's not enough land to cast the Yorion this turn. No, there was before we played yeah. the uh, right the Ren and Six. But since we played the Ren and Six, there was not. Well, a whole heck of a lot happened on that turn cycle. And Robert Hayes is now demonstrably ahead in this game. So, George and Shabur, what uh, is going to bail you out of this? Well, it's hard because, like, what's going to bail you out? And then as a backup plan, should things go horribly awry somehow for Robert Hayes in this turn, has an Emmercool in hand. Yeah. So we know Sword of Fire and Ice is in hand. We're nowhere near a win by equipping and attacking. So that's... It's hard. Even equipping and attacking at all. Maybe if you attack with Stoneforge, shoot down one of the flyers, leave the germ back to block the Omnath. Okay, here's a Narset. What's going to be the pick? Days undoing land. Go. <laughs> I'm not sure that would cut it either. No, I don't even Ooh. think at that point. Yeah, I think, well, Ooh, I guess no. if you had to shuffle back the Emrakul into, hand, into yeah, your it, deck. It would be pretty good. You're right. It would, it would be pretty good because the attack is contained, at least for the moment, with the germ being able to block the Omnath. I, I didn't even see it. Did, did George miss? I think we missed. Yeah, nothing yeah. was revealed. So either okay. didn't want to reveal something or missed, which is oof. Well, this is a matchup where all the removal can't necessarily be burned off to advantage because Supreme Verdict in hand is uh, is not something that, that Robert can just get rid of without killing the Emrakul alongside everything else. Mm -hmm. and so here's an attack for two. George will fall to one. Oh, attacking Narset oh. for two. I'm sorry. Narset Nars Nars for one. Okay. Oh, okay. I guess fair. Yeah, that makes sense. And Cameron this turn is just trying to say that Nars Does Sword of Fire and Ice anything. shoot anything? I think it. I mean, I know I it shoots any target. I, I I know it can shoot the player, but if you can shoot yourself, uh, it deals two damage to any target, and you yeah. So it. Sword of Fire and Ice could be equipped to the Caldra. It can attack Robert, and then Robert could have George shoot himself. <laughs> I mean, that would work. I think that would work. <laughs> That's a creative way to win with your I mean, ever cool turn. I don't. I don't see any other way that uh, that that Robert's going to win the game instantaneously. That's fair. Yeah, we'll see if uh, Robert gets there. Robert has more oh. than enough life, but it looks like George is just going to pack yeah. it well, all in yeah. anyway. George might have just given it up, but since since they actually went through the process of the turn, maybe Robert said, "Hey, I'll equip this. I'll attack. I'll shoot your." Have you shoot yourself, and that would do That's it. That's totally fair. Yeah, once again, we don't hear the players, so we mm -hmm. don't exactly know what their conversation is like, how the communication for the game is shaking out, and mm -hmm. that leads yeah. to us being a little bit on the outside sometimes, especially yeah. on some of those judge calls. Ch Chat's talking about there being a shock line. I mean, that would do it also. That's way less clever, but uh, I guess... <laughs> If You're you technically wanna... not allowed to shock yourself if you can't pay the cost. Well, well okay, you can if you go two. exactly to one, not yeah. negative amount. No, use it to, at two, you can do it, right? Yeah. You can kill yourself, yeah. 
So anyway, uh, however you want to go about doing it, um, that is game over for Robert Hayes. The sort of fire and ice was a more creative line. Yeah, I right. liked it. Yeah. yeah. Give points to Joe Lissette. Yeah. Well, see, the problem, though, is that I didn't decide that was the cooler option. That was the only option I noticed. I don't think that speaks much credit for me. That's like all the people who there were a lot of ways that you can, if your opponent's at two, you can have like a painful truths sort of situation where you have them draw two cards and lose two life. Hmm. Yeah, I feel like I've had that come a lot up. In people in chat life. saying, hey, duh, he was at two, dummy. Yeah, I know he's at two. That's why I thought Sword of Fire and Ice would work. <laughs> yeah, Sword of Fire and Ice. Two damage, any target. Anyway, it works out. Yeah, the players are reconfiguring for game number three. There are definitely times when you learn stuff in a game and then and adjust your boarding for game three. We may be seeing that here. We're going to go and look at the deck list one more time. We did see that George brought in Stoneforge package and all three equipment. Yeah, at the cost of what spells, though? Like, well, what was taken out and was it worth it? We didn't see a chance in that game. That's true. But I do feel like this main deck is probably just in such a good position to play a long game and then just lock out this four color deck so it seems a little difficult to me to commit to the stoneforge again for game three but if you committed to it once maybe you just committed to it again the next time i'm mm -hmm. a little torn i it's definitely it feels back and forth to me mm -hmm. sure yeah we'll see all right and then yeah, Supreme Verdict, that's not going to be good every game in this matchup, but it would have been good that game. And it's good against Emrakul, as long as you're not dying to, you know, a clever sort of fire and ice trigger or <laughs> something, you know, completely dull like a Shockland. Uh, Robert Hayes' deck, I mean, we saw the Veil Summers. It definitely made a difference. And I think that oh, was yeah. kind of the primary card we thought we would see. And, and we did see it. I mean, Flush Storms may be there as well. So I don't know that uh, there's not, you know, I don't believe artifact removal to bring in. So like, oh, now I saw stone yeah, equipment. Now I'll bring artifact you, removal. But... Yeah, there is. You're right. There is a Pesage you. Uh That seems, you know, reasonable actually to bring that in if it wasn't already there. Mm -hmm. Like at worst, it's a land. I don't know. So that one might be good. But with, uh, with George going first here, uh, I think... You know, any early play. Yeah. And then I'd love info run. on if we got a Kahira reveal or not. Uh, right. Uh, and then followed by any early play and then a, uh, including a counter, followed by a Narset. Seems like a pretty good start. Looks like. All right. No Kahira once again. There is still a Yorion, though. That would have been something. <laughs> Starting off with this uh, triome for third time. I guess all the other times we fetched for it, but this one it's actually starting off uh, in play. Triumphs for both players. Okay, so. One disadvantage for George here is a lot of Robert's potential two drops are have flash, or at least well, half of them probably. The quadrils mm -hmm. versus the running six. So having that mana up isn't necessarily gonna oh. do much. Stoneforge Mystic, that's nice. Uh also having a third land drop is nice. Yeah, we'll see if that is actually something that George has, or maybe just has a shock land that we're looking to play tapped. But is going to go looking. Decided to keep the Stoneforge Mystics in. And we'll see. Yeah, first thing to go for is going to be that Batter Skull. Just trying to get out the gates quickly. Wasn't able to do it last game. But this is a turn two Stoneforge Mystics. So maybe that will be different. And we'll see if we have a tapped or untapped land to play after this Stoneforge. And we don't have a land to play. That I don't, is... I don't think we do. Oh, yeah. This oh, well, this might... is, yeah. There's no land here for George Shabor. 
That makes it tough. Hmm. Okay. Looks like prismatic ending to take out Stoneforge. And now this is going to start to feel really bad, but it looks like, thankfully, force negation. Well, you know what comes one man up? Bang. <laughs> oh. oh. Yikes. That's. I mean, that's why they're in the deck. Uh, that is why. And this and is the Robert draw, Hayes. I mean, this is the way you draw it up. I mean, George DeBoer has gotten absolutely just crumpled by Yellow Summer two games in a row. And it, this is one of the places where it's like, this is where his control deck made it this far and was mm -hmm. one of the few like undefeated decks that just got to double draw into the top eight. And it's hard for me to believe that you didn't run into a Veil of Summer and get like crushed by it earlier in the day. Oh, maybe. Yeah. I mean, this is. Or did and somehow played through it, which. Yeah. I mean, there's scenarios where it wouldn't come up. Like if the fairy time ravel. Oh, no. Is there another one? No, there's no. Not. Okay. Um, there could be a fluster storm this time. Oh, that's true. That's true. I mean, with the fairy on the board, it's not something you have to really worry about. Uh, there is fluster storm. Okay. Risen Reef in the play. Yeah, I, the, the Veil maybe wouldn't have... I mean, it was still gross. But it would have been less gross if George also had lands to follow it up. Mm -hmm. And now has missed lands for potentially three turns here. Yeah. And that is the part that really hurts. Oh, is this recoverable at this point? Um, That's going to make me think I no, but... I mean, yeah, I, that's my instinct also. I mean, Robert's not up that many cards. Uh, here, well, now he's up even more. Ugh. Okay. So, subtlety pitching Days Undoing. I mean, Days Undoing is not doing George any good right now, obviously, oh, so that's not a huge yeah. loss. But losing the subtlety, I mean, as well. And so, Robert fetching here. I wonder if he's fighting back here or if he's just, he just wants the Teferi on I top. I would just back. put it on top, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he just doesn't want to shuffle it away. And in for two. Yeah, I think you're just wanting to keep that to Barry as much as possible, but yeah, I think George has missed a few too many land drops that this is just gonna the door is, I would say, almost already closed. Mm -hmm. If not closed completely. Yeah, he's got another flush storm in hand. So here's this to Ferry again, and it's just in there. do about it this time and yeah you mentioned it has another fluster storm in hand so backup should anything go wrong which mm -hmm. not likely to if your spells can't be countered stoneforge times two here yeah i mean that's <clears throat> great but can, the fairy can deal with that just by bouncing it reset it and that's i mean well that works too hardcast fury Cast Fury that also commits a lot more damage to the board as mm -hmm. well. And drop a card because of Risen Reef. I and mean, this is this is kind of the familiar thing in Robert Hayes' decks. You know, once once you get things get going, you just build and build and build. Mm -hmm. And I uh, yeah, I mean this is just an unfortunate way for it yeah. to end. Anyway, you slice it. Yeah. I mean, you can understand to keep Stoneforge Mystic a counter and you hope to draw a third land and you're off and mm -hmm. running with whatever you have as a follow-up, but it's also, you know, a risk that you know when you, when you make decisions like that. And, mm -hmm. and even then, like, this is where his control deck. It's not playing a ton of ways to draw cards, save mm -hmm. for the Planeswalkers. Yeah, And when I say it's not playing a ton of ways to draw cards, the ways you're drawing cards are days aren't doing. So, yeah. Uh, what All a right. rough way for that to end up yeah. for George. And... It is. So, George Abur, good run through to the top eight. It ends here. Robert Hayes advances. He will play in the semifinals tomorrow morning at 9 central time. We're going to jump right in to game three live of one of the other quarterfinal matches. So, no, no time last replays. We're just going to get into it because they are still playing. So let's get that going. I believe it's 
Dweevu versus Zach Dubin, but I'm not mm-hmm. 100% sure that that's the match we're going to. But go ahead and bring it in. Yeah, we'll figure it out pretty quick. And it looks like that is, in fact, it. And, oh, this looks a little rough. Uh, it does. So we got Chalice on zero to stop Summoner's Pact. We got, well, I guess that's all we have. We have some more missed land drops. Well, let's see. There's four mana... There's four mana generating land on the board for Dwee Vu, and there's one, two... You know what? I take that back. No missed land drops. It's just elusive because of the Center growth, growth Chamber. Yeah. Yeah. And the Abundant Growth. Right. So a little bit of things on both sides making it feel like uh, we're yeah. in a disparaging... We also are a little bit uh, shocked from that last game, which is not making it any better. And We're just like, oh, no. Missing land drops, but despite how it looks, are in fact even though uh, two destroyed dryads of the Elysian Grove should say a little bit about who is in the more advantageous position here. Whoa, Soken's on. All right, Soken's on and a dress down on the board. If you're just joining up in the raid from Doomwake, who was with us uh, for the first half of the day and will be here tomorrow morning. Thanks for showing up. You just missed the first quarterfinal match where four color elementals on the back of a pair of Vela Summers, one in game two and one in game three, defeated Azorius Kahira Control. And we are now in game three of another quarterfinal where we have Dewey Vu versus Zach Dubin. Uh, Zach Dubin, we just moved into this game a turn ago, so we're catching up, but it does look like Zach Dubin is somewhat in command of what's going on. Oh, thank you. I was about to ask. Oh, I'm not sure exactly what this card is, but it is an Eternal Witness that is the play for Zach Dubin on this turn. And I believe... I feel like I also saw... Okay. Return to Dress Down to Hand. Mm-hmm. Um, that's quite a good card against something like hmm, Primeval Titan? Yes, it certainly is. And here is a Titan. Here is the Dress Down that Duivu knew was there. So now it becomes a question of can... This Titan survive the turn cycle. And if it can, okay. Do we vote might be in business? Uh, this is a live game. So if we can turn off the time shifted tab, let's go ahead and do that. Bunny Growth for Zach Dubin, just trying to cement his position here and really dig for a way. Uh, I haven't seen a way in his hand to deal with this Titan yet. But maybe there's one there. Yeah. I think, well, I don't even know if it has Death Touch. I don't even know if we have another Snow Permanent in play. Oh, you might be right about that. There are certainly not three. I'm not, you're right. There may not be any. Yeah, I was kind of optimistic. I was like, oh, Death Touch could be okay against Primeval Titan. Not like a permanent solution or not like a great solution, but certainly kind of one. But if it doesn't even have Death Touch, then that's... uh. Potentially a little rough here. Yeah, okay, there's there's one snow land. And this is the last match that is out for the evening. Zach's able to find off of a second eternal witness. So right. I'll find go back into the graveyard and find the dress down. And at least keep it for the next turn to continue to hold this primeval titan at bay a, a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. If the titan gets to attack once, I mean that's pretty significant. Uh, mm-hmm. That will, that will, at the very least, catch Dewey up a lot as far as just overall total presence on the board. Oh, okay. So. Uh, We've been making a lot of uh, Cavern of Souls jokes. Uh, the Cavern of Souls for Dwey is actually naming <laughs> Snake to play Sakurt Triangle. Well, why wouldn't it be? Isn't that what you have put money on? I mean, who needs it for... Who needs it for Giant? Right. I mean, how many counterspells is Zach Dubin likely to be playing? That, uh... <laughs> is, uh, in fact, I believe, playing four, if I've uh, looked and read correctly on this deck list. Well. I guess you don't have to worry about it. 
on this point with Zach actually tapped out on whatever turn we were on here. It looks like about seven. And Titan here, yeah, crashing in. Now, may this cavern will be reset. That is something that can happen in these decks. Also, Toriel West in play. So multiple options for bounce lands to return. Culture choice number one, Bosechu choice number two, and Bosechu returns. All right. Ooh. All right. So we have a way to get rid of either one of these lands that have an abundant growth on it, or more likely get rid of Chalice of the Void. Yeah. So one, two, six mana available. Knocking out Chalice would leave four for the turn. This is just another Titan. It is. Well, this Ooh. turn was pretty good. Yeah, thought that we were safe for a turn. That dress down in hand can't take too much damage this turn, but that's really going to hurt. Yeah, it could even conceivably, I, I don't know how likely this is, but the intention could be to Poseidon the dress down before the next combat phase, because unless... Zach Dubin finds multiple solitudes or just heavy duty removal spells. These primal titans are going to attack again. And mm -hmm. even though using Bosetri to kill Dress Down doesn't seem ideal, it is something that could happen. Mention, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> not to mention that that Dress Down would you know remove trample and remove. Uh, the ability to fetch out lands, but these things still need to be blocked. Mm -hmm. And and there are yeah, there are still six sixes. Yeah. All right, let's see. Zach Dubin got a subtlety, has another chalice in hand, gonna go ahead and play that's yeah. That yeah. and it uh counters itself, Dwyer mentioned. So that's not too costly, I don't think, as Extra chalice, you know, isn't really valuable in hand either at this point. Yeah, I think Zach just saw the uh, Besaju go to hand and was worried that there yeah. potentially would be a right. Besaju removal. You are right that that could be what the reasoning was. I was wondering why there's so few cards in Zach's graveyard, but there is a Bos there is a um, Bajugabog in play for for Dewey Boost, so that explains that. <laughs> So what are we going to see here? Yeah, Dewey's like, okay, combat phase. I know you're going to have to have something. Solitude plus Ephemerate would be pretty good. Well, just Solitude by itself is pretty good. Yep, there, yeah, there is. Oh, there's the dress down. Okay. <clears throat> Does have to be played after the solitude otherwise that solitude wasn't going to amount to much mm -hmm. all right what are we hiding here this is on zach's turn yes no this is or this is on dway's draw beginning of combat step oh okay 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 so i think we are deciding if the Seiju is going to be used on the dress down or not. Okay, so dress down resolves. If the amulet deck could find another copy of Dried of Legion Grove, the game may just end immediately. However, I believe you said there was two that were gone already. There's one. I believe oh, we just okay. got one in hand. From oh. uh, Primeval Titan and the Groot Turf Bounce. So I think there's for sure a Besaju. Sorry, no, no, I'm, I was, sorry. No, I wasn't talking about Besaju. I was talking about oh. Dry to the Legion Grove. Yes, there's two that are gone from okay. Primeval's deck already. But that doesn't mean that there couldn't be another one in hand, so. Right. Well, I, I, well, there clearly isn't. If there was, it would have, well, maybe not guaranteed been played pre-combat, but it certainly would have been possible. And then this chalice is preventing pacting for any additional copies. Here is, here is Pasechu on the dress down. 
I've certainly never seen this interaction. It seems unpleasant card wise, but Primeval mm -hmm. Titan tends to do a lot of work when it attacks. Yes. Uh, however, if Zach Dubin has something like an ephemerate and fetches up a white land here, this is going to look real bad. I guess it's already bad, though. The, the, the ephemerate would have been. That is what's going to happen. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's. Uh, that's a little rough. Yeah, and there is, is very another. Rough. There's another it, primeval titan in Quangfu's hand. That was well set up by Zach Dubin. If yeah, if he determined that because Solitude plus Ephemerate was probably going to get the job done. Job done, but if he determined if I play Solitude and Dress Down tapping out, I might bait the Basaju that I know my opponent has. I, if that yeah. was the plan, that worked out very well and that was a yeah, good that was well thought out by zach dubin that doesn't mean he's necessarily going to win because now the dress down is gone so uh if there is a dry it, well we'll see what is searched up here it's five mana available it looks like maybe six there might be one floating from one of the uh semi gross chambers It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be Nurse's Saga. Saga. Okay, okay. Summoner's Pact in hand, but that chalice is stopping it. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that uh, cavern also not naming giant, naming snake. Not like there was lands untapped for Zach, but even still. Oof, ephemerate witness, get back ephemerate. Uh that's uh that's bad times for number one seed. Man, people were taking out ephemerate to play traverse the Uven world. Clearly, I get it, but I uh... not realizing what they were giving up. Every time I see a eternal witness ephemerate, I'm just like, wow. Annoyed, but wow. <laughs> Strong stuff. So Zach Duman will rise up to 12. Not entirely safe yet, but well, actually probably is. With Dress Down and Ephemerate in hand, there's almost no way that the Titan deck can accomplish anything using creatures. And that's kind of what this deck is based on. Titan, response. What order should I do these things in? Does the Titan trigger even bother me right now? Maybe it's what Zach Dubin is thinking. Mm -hmm. Okay, because we have the ephemerate in hand, so like the solitude can just like kill the primeval titan. So it's probably just a choice between do we exile primeval titan or do we dress down it? All right, it's just going to be. Uh, Summary Eternal Witness, get back another dress down. Choose mm -hmm. dress down. Okay, sure. All right, the Primeval Titan is in there. Very sad, uh, Primeval Titan. Yeah, well, earlier we were talking about uh, Primeval Titan. Uh, coming in, getting two cards and not or two lands and not being able to do too much and calling that fair. Maybe this is fair. <laughs> You're paying six mana for your six six trample, kind of. All right. So how does Zach want to finish this game out? Is that a let's okay. Options abound here. The simplest thing is just ephemerate on solitude, but mm -hmm. Zach might be looking for more than that. Might be wanting to get an attack in this turn with the solitude. Okay.
All right, just a straight up, straight up attack for five. Turtle win this as a 2-1 into a 6-6 six, six trampler. Gets through, no problem. Okay. I mean, we do have the Fury in hand. So, like, if mm-hmm. the that Eternal Witness were to get blocked, somehow we'd end up being able to take out the Primeval Titan. And considering this is Quangvu's third Primeval Titan that is now gone, and that's really the route to victory for this Amulet Titan deck. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a Valakit in play, which is, like, the next direction that I think we need to be looking. But again, two Dryad Elysian Groves are gone and three Primeval Titans are gone from Quang Fu's deck now. Yeah, that's, I mean, th- there's almost no way through this. Uh, that attack was tall and witness was just, you know, welcoming a blocking, uh, you know, honestly, probably there should have been a block because the ephemera is going to happen regardless. So you may as well not take the damage, but also probably doesn't matter. Uh, and now we've got Urza Saga rolling up, I believe, to three this turn. So Construct number two and Tutoring for... I mean, what, what helps at this point? Maybe Graveyard Hate to break up some of this Witness Recursion. Yeah, but there was also already a Relic of Progenitus in the yard. And if we take a look at Kung Fu's deck, I think there's only one Relic of Progenitus. So we've already used um, Mm -hmm. Graveyard Hate that I can initially see. Yeah, Titan Titan can grind out some, some games, but this... This is a whole other ordeal. Dealing with this four color blink ephemerate eternal witness looping with dress downs. <laughs> and... Yeah, I mean, there's no reason to do it, but I honestly feel like Zach could let these Pineal Titan triggers resolve and it may not even matter. That's also totally possible. And there's a ton of lands. Ephemerate, eternal witness, get back ephemerate. Draw a card. Mm-hmm. Same song and dance so far. I mean, maybe Zach will deck himself. That seems zero probability, but I'm trying to look at routes for this amulet deck to actually get itself out of this, which just seems impossible. Uh, we aren't that well. I mean, it's a ways away for Ren Six Ultimate. Mm-hmm. And Zach doesn't need it, but I'm sure he'll take it if he gets that far. Yeah, you know. And it's it's also hard in these situations because we could also be one of these players in top eight and you're like, I'm sure there's a way to win and I'm just like not thinking about it right now. Mm-hmm. All the primeval titans are gone out of this deck. Still, yeah. I think like the way that I can think of is Dried of the Lazian Grove, Valka, but I think we still don't beat the Ephemerate Solitude eternal witness combo that's happening right now like all creature-based ways of winning are out and i don't think there's any way for us to accelerate valakuts to destroy these things yeah i don't think the life tolls are correct anymore they haven't been changing uh i don't know what the players are actually at but i do not think kwang vu is at 29 the i i understand too i mean you're sitting there this sit looks hopeless but you're two matches away from from a regional championship invite as well as uh, a good amount of money. The, uh, all of yeah, our we reasons, can just, all the we can just look at ephemerate again. Sure. There you go. Yep. Excellent creature you control and bring it right back. And it has a rebound. So what's been happening as an arboreal grazer comes into play. And Zach's like, Please Oh, let me die with the sloth. Lightning bolt. Oh, get no. Out of here. Okay. Nope. You cannot. You cannot. And a whole lot of hand wave. That looked like it was an accelerated was... game for a moment there. The speed of the yeah, hand waving. Yeah, I thought so too. Oh my gosh. But yeah, what's going on here with this ephemerate is it's like blink witness, pick up whatever you want. And then when it rebounds, you pick the, the witness, you blink the witness and get the ephemerate back. And here is just. Another attack for mm, somewhere in the neighborhood of 15. Let's see. 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Actually, it's 15. Mm-hmm. Uh, I 
Uh, Summer's packed, countered. Lightning bolts to finish it off. I mean, it's been finished for a while. <laughs> Summoner's packed, countered. Really uncharitable for Zach not to let these resolve. Well, I guess he's not. <laughs> it's not really up to him. Uh, it's game yeah, goal. I don't even think that there's yeah. any like uh, it's, it's creatures that could really even be searched for for yeah for Dwight. Unfortunately, wow. Uh, what a what a Mount game three Witness here. Bolt, finish it off. Zach Dubin grinds through everything the Titan deck had to offer and is able to wrap up his own spot in the semifinals.